What's up guys, considering the hopefully much better rate of videos with a Phoenix Coaches one, I believe this is the, I want to say, 13th video for Phoenix. So we're much further ahead than we are. Actually, we're at the same point with Washington, because I pre-recorded it, but I won't ruin that. But there was a few things that I want to do before we actually get to the meat of the preseason. And the first one of that is... Uh, I'm never going to be able to say your name, mate, but I'm going to bitch this up. Chino Stanmark Okfer, actually that's not too bad, told me that I need to sign the European drafted players if I want them to get better because they're not actually going to go to the juniors because they're not junior eligible because eligible, they come from Europe. I didn't know that, so I'm going to go ahead and sign some of them. So Sam Bennett is from the CHL, so I don't need to worry about him if my understanding of how this works is correct, which it probably isn't. Uh, Nikolai um, uh, Goldbin, I need to sign. He's probably cast as a free agent now, so I'm just going to give them what they want. So yeah, he's signed. Sorry about my phone going off. Hey, sorry about that, my apologies, but we are back at it. So Josh Hosang is not the person that I just selected. Hayden Fleury should be Canadian. Yeah, that's fine. Honker, Honker, he's the main person that I was told to resign because he is finished, so he can't play in the. He's not eligible to play in the juniors, which makes sense until. But I never thought about it until someone pointed it out. So, pretty sure that Fleury is Canadian. Yeah, that's fine. And not worried about Tiny Lombardi. Brennan Lemieux, he plays in the juniors, that's fine. And everyone else is fine. Is there a rookie goalie that I need to sign? I don't think there is. No, there isn't. Okay, so that's fine. We can do that. And, you know, since we have got about 20 million in available cap, we might as well sign some prospects from free agency as well. So we won't bother with Gerby, but we will go with Bowman. Give you. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, he's going to get a jump in a year's time, isn't he? Bleeding neck. That's f uh, no, I, I just give him the one year. Give him the one year of what he wants, and then we'll worry about that next year if he gets a jump because we can always sign him instead of someone else. We will also go for this Matt Conan guy. He's looking like he could play in the uh, AHL for us, so that's fine. Two years, half a million, that's cool. As well as, right, let's just check out. Have a look at some players, shall we? Not worried about, not bothered about Matt Fraser. We will give this Troy Burke three years and see what he comes to. Give Wellwood a few years as well, actually. He's not interested in two-way contract, but that's, uh, that's okay. We can play him. That's fine. Tempted to sign Zuccarello, but I imagine he wants three years at two million. That's not the best. What does he want? for one year and we can deal with, with his demands in the next year you know Zuccarello is just a signing of want but I think we actually need to sign some people to actually get to the salary cap um, floor so that's fine um, send an offer to Austin Levy as well because we can and finally uh, we might as well do Nick Delorias as well just to see and we will make sure what was that have I not got enough Contract room. Ah, okay, that's fine. That's fine, so we won't bother with him. So we've offered one for all these. We could do Nathan Gerby. Yeah, we might as well do Nathan Gerby. Why not? Now, is there anyone else? There was, I had a list submitted to me. But I don't think there's anyone else worth picking up on it, from what I can tell. And goalie wise, we. Did already sign someone, but you know, getting someone else might not be the worst idea in the world, and getting a minor league back up with a little bit of potential. Quite like the idea of getting Darcy Kemper, but I would prefer to get um, Johnny Otto. So we'll get him for three years. So he could develop into something. 
And I really don't think there's anyone else worth trying to sign from the looks of it. Nope, I don't think there is. Oh, there's this Janmark guy, actually. Uh, w yeah, why not? Go for Matthias Janmark. Uh, overall for the AHL team, is going to be all over the place. Uh, why not? Why not? This is very self-indulging, really. I am just signing these people because I can. But, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. They could turn out to be something for us. we got Bork. Do we need Terrell? Probably not. McKee? No. No, okay. So, well, we will end it there. We won't go too crazy with it. Oh, we will not have enough to space to sign on these people, I don't think. We got Levy, we got Honka, I didn't get him, got him. And that is actually our rosters filled out, so. You know, we couldn't sign as many people as we wanted. I think we might have to make a trade or two just to reach the salary cap floor. Yeah. Yeah, I think we are going to have to make some trades. Can I trade now? I think I can. Okay, so let's trade away some people we know we're not going to use. So, you are on contract. I'm not going to use you. Um, Crane, are we going to... Uh, I kind of want to keep hold of you. Okay, let's do it from goalies first. So, goalies. We have loads of goalies. So, we can trade two goalies away straight away to someone. Uh, I'm not going to trade my Smith, don't worry. And I'm going to trade um, Beckham Bloom. Don't want to trade you. So, sort this out. Smith and Dubnik are AHL goalies. And then we have um, Svenberg and McCollum. And then Lee and Dominic can go. Winnipeg want them both. That's fine. Probably get a third round for both of them. Is that not going to go through because of their number of skaters? Too many goalies. Okay, that's fine. We can trade one of them. So I don't think we get a third for him, but they want to give up a fourth, so I'll take a fourth. That's fine. Yeah, so that clears up a space. And then Lee, we go to Vancouver and get a third. No, I'm not going to go through if we go to Vancouver. And uh, Philadelphia want him. And uh, for a fourth. Okay, so Lee's not worth a fourth. How about a fifth? Cool, that's fine. So we freed up two spots in the roster. That can be Zuccarello and Nathan Gerby, no problem. So we cleared up the goalie pool a little bit. And then we got our two rookies are not signed but waiting. So that's fine. And defensemen, we have a lot of defensemen signed. So Hedman, Ekman Larson, Gormley, Matter, Cece, Summers and Slemko, as well as Griber. Um now, the problem with CC, oh, Matter, sorry, he's a good defenseman, but I never see him get any, any better in anyone else's GM modes. And I know that most GM modes are subtly different, but that's a little bit worrying that he's not going to get any better. But I feel like we could trade him and another player and another defender for someone who is going to get better, considering we have CC as well, who should be better. And then obviously Honka, uh, Slemko, and loads of other people we can play and have Summers and Slemko. On the top six, if we don't get anyone for Matter, so I feel like Matter could go. But it is a case of getting a good defenseman back as well, not just trading him away for the sake of it. Which we might be in danger of doing. So if we could do Matter for Larson, would be something I'd be interested in doing. I think Larson's got two years left on that contract, so that's not too bad. But I don't think that trade would go through, and I think I would prefer Adam Larson. He's got better potential anyway. Uh, you know what? Matter for Larson is something I'm willing to do. Why, so let's see if we can do it right. Skate is matching block. And. Da, da, da. Right. Uh, none of those guys are going anywhere. Neither are any of these guys. Gordon could go Pelter. I've never heard of you. You can go. Add a bit of value to it. As well as Summers could probably go. 
would be more inclined to get rid of Lane than anyone else. Yeah, I'll get rid of Lane and who's the worst overall guy that they're entered in. The plant's not science, there's no point in trading him and the crane. So what do they say to this? They say yes, okay, so another super Swede has been signed to go along with Hedman and Ekman Larson on the back line. So we get Adam Larson. I feel like Adam Larson is gonna progress better than Oli Matter. A little bit more on the contract, but he's got better potential as well. So I think that's a good trade, and we freed up a lot of roster room as well, so we can go and sign people like Gerby and Slemko for the hell of it, really. And it's not made our overall defence any worse. We're going to have Gormley and Larson, and then CC and Slemko or Summers. So that's fine. Is there anyone else on deal we can trade that we're really not bothered about? Um, well, Hesky and Medley can go. And that should free up lots of room. So Medley can go as well. So Nashville want the pair of them. And that is something I am happy about. Uh, picks. Could we steal a second for them? I doubt it, but let's give it a go. Yeah, didn't think so. Third. Steal a third. That's fine. Steal a third for two players we're not going to win. And we're stockpiling some picks here, actually. Mainly fifths and thirds, but we didn't, and fourths. But you know, picks are picks. We didn't have a third round pick, and now we do. Um, right, so defensemen, I think we're pretty set. Not sure we need to trade away anyone else because we've got a few unsigned players and a few prospects. Yeah, that's fine. And right, right wings. So Grabner, Kuznetsov, Kuhlman, Yip aren't going anywhere. Manfred's not going anywhere. Chris Goh's not going anywhere. Uh, Jan Mark was someone I just signed, so that's fine. So it would just be. Warts would be someone who go, goes anywhere. I don't think he's got a lot of trade value. Might as well keep hold of him. Left wing. Um, only people that I've just signed in Reichnall and um, Loken. So there's no point in signing anyone else or trading them. Centres. This is where we can probably make a few roster spaces up. Right, so McKinnon, Brassard, Gordon and McClement are staying. Um, McMillan staying. So either Mele or Klinkhammer can go get rid of Andy Mele because he's got the extra year in his contract that we can hopefully free if anyone wants him of course nobody wants him let's just trade him away to someone who's not in our division the Ottawa Ottawa don't want him and for him let's try and get a third in 2016 didn't think so. Right. Um, right. I don't want that. So we could try and get another third for this year, but I don't think that trade is going to go through by itself. But let's stop, try and upgrade our fourth to a third. Cool. So that's fine. I'll upgrade the fourth to a third with the help of Andy Melly. Probably a bit of an overstretch, but that will do. Stop out some picks. Um, Bennett, we've not signed. <coughs> Excuse me. So the Klinkhammer, Shimon, Matuk. Samuelson, Bork, and Laplante. Let's just get rid of Matic for someone. Nashville want him. Still another pick away from Nashville. See if we can't get their third next year as well. And we can. Okay, so we've picked up loads of picks and we've cleared a lot of space in our salary cap room. Uh, in our contract, sorry. We got, rid of, we got rid of eight players by doing that as well as some goalies so we can go ahead and fill up our team depth again by signing people like Gervy. I think uh, Zuccarello has just gone I think if I am read the news real yeah, Zuccarello has gone we can go for Bowman and Gerby Bowman has gotten better since the time we just looked at him so we might as well go for him so Nathan Gerby can have uh, 2 million for the one year and then worry about whether we can afford to resign him at the end of the season Gerby yeah, can have the one year. Bowman, you can have. So you're interested in a two way contract, but you're not interested in that. Okay, that's interesting. Bowman can have what he wants for one year, and again, we can worry about the salary cap moving around next year. So Bowman, you can have the 1.2, because it literally makes no difference when you get down to it, really. So 1.2, there you go. 
Right, uh, who was it? Wellwood, no. Make sure we're only offering to unrestricted free agents as well. Let's go after that goalie, actually. Yes, so we get a backup, so you can have the three years at 1.72. Uh oh, 0.72, not 1.72, sorry. And then all skaters. Let's make sure we get the players we're actually going after. And then we can worry about everyone else. Come on. So we've got Gerby, we've got Borrowman, and we've got Ontario. Ontario, that's good. Uh, who's 23? So we could get Martin. Yeah, we'll go for James Martin. I don't think his discipline's fantastic. But just for the one year. Yep. And finally, let's go for Tonya. Not even going to pronounce his name. <laughs> no point trying. That will give us five caps, uh, salary cap, cap spaces, roster spaces left. No, three, sorry. And then if we need to, we can sign a veteran and sit on our bench for some uh, to be able to reach the cap floor. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with all the moves we're making. There are still some decent depth players in there, but we don't need to worry about them. Let's skip through to the start of the preseason. We will end that video there and we will sort out <coughs> excuse me, sort out the extra lines and salary cap moves if needed in that video. So a slightly shorter one this time around, but I don't see the point in starting anything really new. But we've done a lot of movements, made got a lot of picks back admittedly third and fourth rounders but you never know trading assets or bits we can add on to a trade we traded Oli Matter for Adam Larson so we got that better potential and someone who might actually get better because I've, I've never actually seen Ekman uh, Matter get better and even if they do improve Larson looks like he's going to be the better of the two so you know RD, I think I prefer RD this year actually obviously Gormley and CC are better to start with and hopefully McKinnon and such are improved forward wise hopefully we will be able to check that out before we end this video is what I'm aiming for so they, only, they still only want 39 wins so they're not expecting much from this team but this team wasn't expected much and we actually made it to the Stanley Cup finals and we were in 20, 20 seconds of winning so I've probably gone too far so we might as well sort out the rosters in this line and then just end it there it's not going to tell us if we are salary cap compliant just yet but that's something we can sort out um, yeah, no, for the interest in keeping this video short, I'm going to do this edit and then bring it in. So you, you know what I mean, I'll, I'll edit it and then do it. So all the lines have finally been done. It took me about 20 minutes to do because I took my time doing it. And I think I've got them pretty much as I want them. Let me show you the NH... Yeah, oh, screw it. I'll show you the AHL lines first. So obviously we need to develop the prospects as best we can. I can't get Honker or Bennett or even Max Domi onto the AHL squad just yet but I can get Reichel, Mantha and a few others on there so I've gone with Reichel, um, McMillan who's technically still a prospect because he's only 24 and he could get a little bit better keep grooming him and Mantha on the first line obviously Reichel has that four and a half um, red star which we hope he gets better and Mantha has the four and a half green, uh, yellow star sorry so just give them the most time on the ice second line I've gone with Samuelson because he is one of our better centre prospects, he's not going to be anything special but we'll try and give him as much of a chance as possible along with Danny Crisco again, sort of uh, give him as much of a chance as possible to make something of himself I stuck Yip, uh, Brandon Yip there as well to try and help those two out I mean, Christo would be okay in the second line but Samuelson is being played above his call of duty I'd say, so Yip should help him out quite nicely, third line we've got Klinghammer helping out um, I think, it, yeah, Brandon uh, Shinneman. Again, another player. It's not going to be much, but he could help out the AHL team when other prospects come through. And Tom Kunhankel is a three and a half green star, sni uh, red star sniper. Again, clean cameras on that line because those two probably would be alright on the fourth line, but give our third line the best chance possible. Play clean camera then. And the fourth line is just um, Le Conan, Bork, and Janmark. You know, they're just the be three best forwards in terms of age and potential. So that's why they are there trying to improve. Obviously, I don't think Troy Burke would make an AHL team in real life, but we'll give them the best chance we can. 
on defense. Look at this. Eric Greiber is an 84 overall. He's gone up by 8 overall points. Now, the only reason I don't have him in the NHL team, as I will explain later, is that Chris Summers also went up. Actually, I might as well show you now, but this is our NHL team. But Chris Summers also went up, and Summers has got 10 better discipline and better skating. So I've put Summers to play alongside CC. But Griber is someone that we can trade now. He's a should be a good trading asset because he's still only 26. His contract is very cheap for his worth. So hopefully Griber is someone we can trade and get something significant back for. Obviously we have Slemko and Martin as well. We've got Martin playing alongside Murphy because Murphy is a four Red Star prospect. And even Martin is 23 years old. He's four, uh, three and a half Red Star. So he could get a little bit better. And I have... Chad Fairchild, who is just was just the best option to play alongside Austin Levy to try and help him out and you know not uh, make Levy suffer by having a bad season. So hopefully Fairchild will keep him there. There was uh, Jones, but I don't think Jones is actually signed to us, so I didn't want to make him better. He's 33 years old, so we might as well try and improve the player that we're signed. And in goal, um, Spenberg also went up, so he is. I think he's listed as a starting goalie and Otto has only gone up a little bit. But on the other side as well, Tom McCollum has gone up a bit as well. So everyone is improving quite nicely. I think if we check out the goalies, yeah, we got two minor league starters. So someone in every position and obviously Dubnik is a NHL backup. Let's go ahead and check out the NHL lines and call this a video. So obviously in goal, we have Mike Smith and Devin Dubnik. I do like that tandem. Dubnik's uh, improvement on Grice in the backup, and obviously Smith is the same as he was last year, so we don't really need to worry about him. And then on offense, we have Nate McKinnon as our first line center again. Obviously, he's gotten a lot better. Five-star putt skills. His face-offs has gotten a little bit better as well, so hopefully that helps. Obviously, his skating is good. He's got a good shot now as well. And his offensive awareness is getting there. His defense is getting better. Only slight concern is the face-offs, but you know, it's still 74, it's okay, and I don't really, like, we could move him out of the wing and just play Kuznetsov as the face-off guy. Or we could even stick Broussard on that first line, but I've just gone with the lines pretty much as they were in the playoffs, because there's not too much difference in the overall, see Kuznetsov's a little bit better. So we've gone with Bodka, McKinnon and Kuznetsov, Nyquist, Broussard and Grabner, because those lines worked well for us in the playoffs, I don't see a reason to change that at all. The third line is Lorai Kopikoski. With now the new Cedric Boyd Gordon, who's obviously a downgrade over Antoine Vermet, but I feel that getting rid of Vermet was something that helps the team out in the long term. And obviously, Gordon has got one of the best face offs in the league and a good defensive category and hell of a good discipline. He's actually a decent skate. I thought he was worse than that. But Gordon is a good third line centre. To be playing alongside Kuhleman as well, a bit of more depth scoring. Kuhleman's note should be alright defensively. He's got a good. The discipline as well and he's an improvement over Yip who was playing there in the playoffs which is the important thing to do he's probably he's worse than Dome uh, Shane don't have on that line but he's better than the team we had in the playoffs and he's also a good skater and then the fourth line we have Jay McClement who's again one of the better face-offs guys in the league good and defensively nice and disciplined so he's gonna help defensively and then we have Dryson Bowman who we picked up he's already gone from a 76 to when we first tried to sign him to an 80 so that was a good signing already He's got a decent defense, decent um, discipline. He's a good skater and he's got a good shot. So this fourth line should actually come up with a few goals because we also have Nathan Gerby on the right of it. He's playing out of position, but his putt possession, skating and defense and discipline are quite good. So I'm hoping this, that these lines, especially with Kuderman as well and his decent putt skills and shooting. And Kopikowski is a good offensive player as well, actually, for the line he's playing on. Can actually manage the puck, keep possession and have good possession stats even if they don't score or keep defend even if not the best defensive depth six, I feel like they will keep the puck nicely. So yeah, I'm not too worried about that. I think they'll defense by keeping the puck and they'll be alright defensively as well. So I'm not too worried about that. And also our defensive core has got to be one of if not the best in the league. We've not got like that ninety superstar. But, I mean, we've got the potential to have one in the next year. So, we obviously, we have Hedman and Ekman last, and we'll keep those two together. I've gone with Brandon Gormley, who's a fantastic surprise. He's an 85 overall. His skating could be a little bit better, but apart from that, no problem with Gormley as well, especially if he's playing with an 83-rated Adam Larson. 
Cut a super sweet. So all of our top four have got four and a half stars. Uh, potential for defence is just outstanding. They're all. I think the oldest one is Larson. No, it's not Larson. Sorry, Larson's only 21 still. I think Larson might be the youngest one out of that lot. Now, the oldest one is Hedman, who's only 23. And obviously on defence, we have Summers, who came out of nowhere, really. 26 years old, so he's our oldest defenceman. He's got a good skate. He's got a good strength and body checking. Discipline leaves something to be desired, but, you know, I think it'll, it'll balance out. It'll be fine. And obviously, we have Cody Cece, who's up and coming as well. So our defence is stacked. We have one guy who's not four and a half stars potential. So this is going to be a fun team to watch in the next couple of years if we can keep it together. And with 20 million in cap space, pretty certain we're going to keep it together. And we still have people like Domi, Bennett, Honker, Lemieux. We've got loads of players coming up. So this Phoenix team is going to be fun to watch over the next few years. Hopefully I can get it to a stage where we see Reichel, Honker, Fleury, Bennett, Domi, Hosang. All of these players reaching the um, NHL standard or NHL level. But I think that's what we hope. What I want to do, I'll just keep going until NHL 15 comes out. I won't set an expiry date on this or the Washington GM, but I am going to set an expiry date on this video, and that is going to be now. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next Phoenix Coaches video.